Hi there. Now for this question, we're given that f of x equals the cos of x squared minus x plus 3, where x is greater than 0 but less than pi. And for the first part, we've got to show that the equation f of x equals 0 has a root alpha in the interval 2.5 to 3 for two marks. And then go on to use linear interpolation once on the interval 2.5 to 3 to find an approximation for alpha giving your answer to two decimal places, and that's for three marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. Don't forget, you can fast forward when you come back if you just want to get an overview of how to do it. Otherwise, I'll take you slowly through the work solution. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, for part A, this is just a question of putting in our values of x into here, 2.5 and 3, hoping to get a change in sign. And if you do that, let's just put f of 2.5 through. Don't forget, make sure, because you're dealing with a trig function here, that you're in radians mode. If you do that, you'll find you get 1.499 and so on. And if you put x equals 3 through, f of 3 turns out to be equal to minus 0.911 and so on. So clearly we've got a sign change. Remember that's not sufficient though to state that there's a root. It's, there's got to be a sign change. The curve has got to be continuous throughout this interval. And if that's the case, then you'll have a root somewhere between that interval. So that since there's a sign change then, and f of x is continuous, therefore there is a root in this interval, 2.5 to 3. Okay, well, moving on then, we've got to get an approximation to this root alpha in this interval here by using linear interpolation. So when I'm doing a question like this, I like to just draw a sketch just so I got an idea of what's going on. And so it would look something like this. I'd have my axes. We've got our y-axis here, x-axis here. And we've got the interval from 2.5 to 3. Now this is not drawn to scale. As I say, it's only here just to give you a rough idea what's going on. And we've got the curve going from 2.5 to 3. Maybe it looks something like this. Who knows, OK? This point up here, this coordinate here, let's just mark it in, would be 2.5. And we've seen that the corresponding y value, or f of x value, is 1.499 and so on. And this point down here, where x is 3, we have a corresponding y value of minus 0 0.911 and so on. And our root alpha is this one here. We'll just mark that in as alpha. And what we're doing is trying to get an approximation for this root by using linear interpolation. In other words, imagining that a straight line exists between this point and this point. So that root that we're going to approximate turns out to be here, fairly close, hopefully, to alpha. I'm going to call that beta. And to do this, I'm going to use similar triangles. I'm going to be considering this triangle running through here, OK, to beta there and back, and comparing it to this triangle running from beta to 3 there, down there, I hope you can see this, and back up there. So by using similar triangles, I can compare lengths. I can compare this length across here, that would be beta minus 2.5, so we therefore got beta minus 2.5, compared with, say, this length across here, from this small triangle, that would be 3 minus beta. Okay, so that's that horizontal width there. 
and that must be in exactly the same proportion, same ratio as comparing, say, the heights of our two triangles. So the height of this triangle will be 1.499 and so on, 1.499 and so on. And this is compared to, and we've got to be careful here, this length is going to be 0 0.911 and so on. We don't put the minus in, okay? So we're just comparing length, so it's 0 0.911 and so on. So just a question now of rearranging this, solving it for beta. And if you do this, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 3 minus beta. I've got beta minus 2.5 then equals, working this out, you find you get 1.645 and so on. And that's multiplied with 3 minus beta then. And if I expand the bracket, we've got 1.645 multiplied by the 3 gives me 4.935 and so on. And then we end up with minus 1.645 and so on multiplied with the beta. Rearranging this, adding this term to both sides and adding 2.5 to both sides gives us 2.645 and so on multiplied by beta equals 7.435 and so on. And then if I divide both sides then by 2.645, I end up with 2.810 and so on. So therefore, that root alpha is approximately the same as beta, which is 2.81 to two decimal places, 2dp for short. All right?